Well, hello there. Welcome in. Who needs a Judge Tammy fix? I know I do. I've missed watching her because I think it's been over a week since I've posted one. So let's get to it. I've got a, I think this next one that we have is, um, oh, it's a, it's a domestic one. So it might be a little sensitive. I don't think we have any today that are going to be comedic in nature. I think this is more serious stuff from Judge Tammy. But as always, we do love her responses. So let's get to it. Enrolled in anger management. He's in ongoing classes and we can show the uh, court um, a document where he, he just went again this week and is progressing well. So gone through some um, counseling and some family training. And these are young people. They are in their early 20s. I don't think Miss Lopez is even 21 years old at this time. But because well, she is, she is the, old enough to be popping out all these babies. Oh, I mean, I'm not trying to be derogatory, but I just feel like people should be adults themselves before they make other little people preach. Well, you know what, you're on a probably in a, our world in a perfect circumstance, but this is number two. So hopefully they will um, at some point get together and make sure that they're making the most I mean, responsible Mr. decisions. Lord, we know your equipment works, sir. You don't have to respond. I mean, I just don't understand understand what is the rush before Miss uh, Lopez can even get her life on track and get somewhere down the road in all in having so many babies because obviously the immaturity has led to why we're here he today that's probably a big factor in why we're here today mm -hmm. go ahead Miss Walter well your honor and you know your honor I I, I don't um really contest that that may be true um I can't really contest that that may be true however um Prior to this incident, you guys watch the guy down in the very bottom reacting to this. <laughs> this isn't even his case. That the couple was living together and residing in the home. And uh, as I stated before, uh, Mr. Lloyd is employed in two jobs. Miss Lopez currently lives with her grandparents. And probably what is important for the court to know is that her grandparents, in no uncertain terms, um, probably thinks more like Your Honor, have said, we're not going to um, indulge. Yeah, we're not going to indulge. With this. And this is not going to be um, babysitter's house for the grand for us. So they cannot offer her you know, any um, assistance beyond what they have. So they've told her, your baby, your decision, you need to figure it out. So that is part of the reason why um, they both, Ms. Lloyd, Mr. Lloyd and Ms. Lopez want to step up and make this work. Now they understand, and I anticipate that the state will bring before the court that these are family violence charges. I wanna say very clearly that we are in no way trying to diminish the severity and importance of the charges that have been made. That's why Mr. Lloyd has taken the initiative to get in the classes. So the just, emergency part is that she's having a C-section and her grandparents don't want to have to carry the burden of helping her with the ba new baby and the, and the baby who's already here. Absolutely. They basically said, as you'll see in her affidavit, that she has to go. And so even they're her grandparents Ooh, when they are they, they do think like me <laughs> <laughs> they, they do and so her parents these are grandparents of nalani um mm -hmm. she can speak for herself but her mom um does not have um nalani has indicated in her affidavit does not have stable housing and so your honor what this is is more of a situation where the parties really have a lot of growing to do but um, they, of course, have not talked at advice of counsel. He knows that he could not have contact. So we've made sure that we stay clear of that. But they do individually and collectively realize that they have made these babies and they have a responsibility. So they've gone and initiated the counseling to try and bring their family back together. He wants Miss Lopez in the home to help her recover um, and to help take care of both financially, emotionally and physically and recoup get her back to health so that she can get on her feet and become gainfully employed and they can take on the full responsibility of raising these children. And so we understand that what we're asking is no little feat, but because of her circumstances and because of the active steps that they've made, we would ask the court to please indulge us and remove those no contacts so that they can join back into the household. Well, now let me just tell you, the converse is what the court looks at um because this her having a c-section and having a young child 
and a new baby makes her even more vulnerable to whatever the issues are that um, occasion this. I mean, I've seen it where it, the weaker she gets, the worse the abuse gets if it's a situation where it's an ongoing abusive situation. So the, the fact that she's having a c-section is not an emergency in my understanding because they knew they was having babies they knew how what to do to get them so they knew that mm -hmm. at some point a baby was going to be born and mm -hmm. the possibility exists that you're going to need to have both parents take care of this baby number one um so that's not an emergency in my eyes um the fact that she's having these kids with no place to stay and no thought process as to i'm not married so i don't have access to this house um, you know, I'm out here, I don't have a, a job that's going to help me support these kids or stability. I'm just dependent wholly and completely on Mr. Lloyd. And if he nuts up, I get put out of the house, not him. He's still in his house. So these are all things that were known to the parties prior to this situation happening. I'm just not sure that this counts as an emergency that I should now um, let them have contact with two vulnerable well three vulnerable people the the child who's already here the the newborn that's about to be born and a woman uh who's going to be recovering from a c-section so now he gets to spend time impressing upon her that she doesn't need to show up for court for these cases for this case when it comes up because that's how all a lot of my cases go away the undue influence that even when i say there's no contact there's contact miss mm -hmm. um hunter Yes, Your Honor, I would just like to um, question Ms. Nalani Lopez on the record. Ms. Lopez, let me see you, ma'am. Raise your right hand for me. You solemnly swear or affirm any testimony that you give in this matter will be true. I solemnly swear this testimony will be true. All right, you can put your hand down. All right, Ms. Hunter. <clears throat> could you state your name for the record? Ma'am, could you please state your name for the record? Nelani Lopez. Now, if you guys have never watched Miss Nigel Hunter, she does not play when it comes to domestic violence. And Miss Lopez, how do you know Mr. Corwin Lloyd? We were together and have a child together. Well, two now. Were you in a relationship? What type of relationship? A romantic relationship. Uh, were you involved in a domestic dispute with Mr. Lloyd on September 3rd, 2020? Yes. At that time, were you pregnant? Yes. And at that time, was your other ch minor child present during the incident? Yes. Oh, that's just strike three right there for me. She was pregnant and the child was, you don't need a strike three on that one. Um, it's my understanding you signed an affidavit um, in this case? Yes. Did you prepare this affidavit? Yes. You typed the affidavit? No, my granddad did, my, my attorney. Which one? My granddad typed it, but I wrote it. He just typed it. Okay. So in essence, the grandparents are enabling him getting out of jail? What? And, um, it is your testimony today that you are no longer in fear um, of any violent actions from Mr. Lloyd? Correct. And is your testimony today that you want to return to the home? Yes. All right, I have no further questions at this time, Your Honor. Um, your Honor, your may Honor, I ask if you call questions? Sure, hold on. What was it you were gonna say, Ms. Um, Hunter? Yes, uh, I just wanted to say, Your Honor, on September 18, 2020, uh, we did modify the bond in this case initially. Uh, Mr. Lloyd was told that he could not return to the residence, which was located at 8669 Greenwich Drive in Riverdale, Georgia. When the victim moved out to live with her grandparents, we did modify the bond so that he could move back into the home. Um, the only concern that the state has, Your Honor, um, as you've heard, um, and per the affidavit, I'm not sure if you have a copy in front of you, um, mm -hmm. review. Um, is that during the incident, Your Honor, the victim was pregnant and there also was another minor child um, that was in the home that was present as well. Mr. Lloyd is charged with criminal trespass, battery, family violence, and cruelty to children in the third degree. 
Um, because of the severity of the battery family violence charge, the state um, does not consent to modifying the bond to no contact with the victim. Um, but per the testimony of the victim that you just heard, um, the state will defer to the court. Um, I did hear that they were taking some counseling classes. I would just ask that the court also issue um, a requirement for continued classes and that they provide um, documentation to probation that they're in counseling. Um, I'm not sure if the counseling is over or if they're continuing counseling. Usually we do ask for the family violence intervention program, which I believe is a more intensive program. So the state will ask for that um, at this time. All right, Ms. Walton, you had questions? Just a few. Good morning, uh, Ms. Lopez. Angie Walton, counsel for Mr. Lloyd. Hello. Um, you testified earlier that you wrote the letter and your grandfather typed the letter and you also mentioned an attorney. Can you explain to the court the relationship between your grandfather and your attorney? Okay, My first granddad. let me ask this. Is that Mr. Lloyd or is that a picture? No, that's me. Oh, okay. You so still, still I was huh? like, is that a picture? All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so could you just explain to the court the relationship between your attorney and your grandfather? This, the both, that's my granddad. Okay, so He's your grandfather friend. is a licensed attorney in the state of Georgia? Yes. And has your grandfather been advising you throughout this case? Yes. And is your grandfather, who's a lawyer, also the grandparent that you're residing with at the time? Yes. Okay, and I just want to make sure that it remains correct today that your grandfather has said that um, upon the birth of this child, you need to uh, be prepared to find other lodging for you and your children. Yes. Okay. And um, despite the allegations um, regarding the September 3rd, 2020 incident, do you have a concern um, at this time that you and Mr. Lloyd will um, deal with these circumstances again in the future? No, because that was the first time thing. Are you willing to go to... Um, continue to go to counseling so that you all can work through any family issues that you may have? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, do you believe that you will be able to properly care for yourself and the two children without the assistance of Mr. Lloyd? Uh, I'm not sure about that because I had to have a lot of help last time with my C-section. Okay. So your first child was by C-section as well? Yes. And was Mr. Lloyd helpful with you in that at that time? Yes. Okay, and with regards to the home, Mr. Lloyd's home, um, is his home better equipped for you in the recovery of a C-section than your grandparents' home? Yes, they have two flights of stairs. His house didn't have any stairs at all. Okay. All right, no further questions um, for Ms. Lopez, Ron. All right, so uh, Ms. Lopez, who's your um, grandfather? Ernest Crosby. All right, so Mr., um, I, you said, you at one point you answered yes at, to a response uh, about whether you were still living with your grandparents and they were the ones who said you couldn't stay there and i kind of got that they're old school like me um, yes so but you see the point they're making yeah it was like it wasn't i was surprised it happened that's why this is the only place i can go because my mom's homeless my dad has his own family to worry about and so, i was <laughs> Ms. Lopez, before you get too far down the road, let me explain to you the situation that I'm in. So the, the factors that I have to worry about are so vast that people don't get it. So people always think it's a situation where I got to worry about somebody just beating somebody. And I know just beating somebody sounds crazy, but that's not it. So I have to worry about when I put someone in a situation or allow individuals to have contact, what I have to worry about is essentially the balance of power that exists in that relationship that A, led to this situation that's before the court and could possibly lead to other situations. The, the issue is that you're not even 21 yet. And so you have wow. no place to stay without Mr. Lloyd two kids to take care of without Mr. Lloyd. I assume you're not gainfully employed right now or at least employed up to the economic level that would allow you to take care of yourself separately with the two kids and to provide housing and transportation and all of those things. And I read an article a while ago, I used to have it, uh, copies of it. Um, it takes about for one parent and one child to live, not, you know, like, oh, we are balling out lovely. No, to live 
at a minimum, it takes about $2,700, $2,800 a month um, to take care of all of those things that are necessary to provide housing, to provide transportation, to all of those things that come with having kids. And so what I, what I don't want is to put you in a situation where because of your age, the fact that you don't have resources, a place to go, this situation right here tells me and it should tell you how vulnerable you are. Because in a situation where if things go south, you have a place to go and you can walk away and the, you can take the kids and y'all can work it out through the court, how this all gets taken care of, that's one situation. But in a situation where the reason you're asking to be back with Mr. Lloyd, and I know you love him, I don't wanna get into all of that because that's the emotional stuff that I just really don't have time to deal with right now. But the <laughs> reason that you really, why this is an emergency is, A, your grandparents don't wanna to have to deal with a baby in their house. And if they're my age or older, I understand. Um, and number two, they're trying to teach you a lesson in that, you're moving so fast to be an adult and to be a parent and to do all of these things, but you haven't established yourself. And so they're at the point where they're doing a little tough love and they're willing to let you fail. So you understand that maybe you don't need to have that third baby, that fourth baby, that fifth baby, before you establish yourself and find some kind of a career or a way to take care of yourself and your children because there's plenty of single parents male and female who can take care of themselves and their kids but that's because they are established you're in a situation where without mr lloyd you don't have anything you're screwed. and so the balance of power is such that even if it wasn't a love thing and I want to be back with him and I think we're going to be together, you really don't have any choice but to request to be back with Mr. Lloyd. Mr. Lloyd has all the power in this situation, all of it. Because if when that last modification was done, if he wanted to take care of you, he could have left the house, stayed out of the house and allowed the modification so that you could stay in the house. Mm -hmm. That's what he could have done to take care of you. But what you ended up doing was having to go back to your grandparents because he made sure he got back in his house. Uh-huh. Just want you to look at these things and be clear about the situation you're in. The fact that y'all taking classes is two kids beyond the pale. You guys, my mama always told me since I was a young age, always be able to take care of you. Because nobody and don't depend on somebody else to take care of you. I'm kind of harsh because of that, I think, though. If you're learning how to parent now and you already got two kids, that's late. So what I'm telling you is what I recognize, what your grandparents recognize is you have no power in this relationship. Because if Mr. Lord really wanted to take care of you, if he had a, a house, he would have kept paying that mortgage, kept paying the insurance and put him, you and his baby in that house until such time as this situation was resolved. Cause I'd have given him plenty of opportunity with the sheriff to go there and get what he needed to operate in the short term. But he walked out, he came back and asked the court to make sure he got back in his house while you had to go to your grandparents. Think about that. So um, in this situation, I am not so inclined I'm sorry to put you back in a, in a, in a situation where you are vulnerable and I hate it. I know that your grandparents um, are fed up, they're done. Um, and you may have to figure it out some other way. Mr. Uh, Lloyd might have to pay for you to stay someplace else. Um, but I'm not in the position right now where um, I'm gonna allow you all to go back together. Cause the Mr. Lloyd showed me who he was came to modify the order so he could get back into this house instead of allowing his family to live in the house that he is already paying for and take care of you in that house he sent you back to live with your family yep he never it never occurred to him that he could take his stuff and go stay on somebody's couch because he's one grown man with a job as opposed to letting a who, who is essentially according to the law still a, a child with two children live in the house that he's already able to take. So he wasn't willing to take care of you in this short term, but now y'all want me to have all these good love feelings about <laughs> you having a C-section and him coming being the good dad that he is. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do it. Go judge. Okay. Um, 
So what do we do now? Yeah, if he read. wants to modify the order where he stays out of the house and you go back to this house and then your mama can come help you, um, she can't live there, but she can come over and help you. That's one thing. I mean, I'd entertain that all day, every day. But what I'm not going to do is um, put you back in a situation where if Mr. Corrin, Lord, decides to kick stuff up again, then you back in the street. I'm not going to do that because he's shown me who he is by what he chose to do on the first modification. So I'm clear on that. If you don't see it, I hope you do, because he chose himself and his comfort over you and your babies. Mm -hmm. um okay uh so what do we do here from now because i'm gonna leave from work actually i work from home miss lopez i'm not sure that's not my that's not for me to figure out what it is for me to figure out is that i'm not willing to put you back in this situation with mr lloyd especially with the balance of power being what it is now i would like i said i will entertain the motion of him getting out of the house and letting you and your babies come back in the house since these his kids and y'all made them together and he want to take care of you. Let him take care of you like that. But mm -hmm. I'm not putting him and you back in the same situation. Is he able to have contact with the children, like the newborn or to help at all? She's overwhelmed. I'm still thinking about that. Y'all might have to come up with something creative, but I just, I just not. Mr. Mr. The, the charges show that the child, your other child was present when all of this happened. So I, I'm not feeling Mr. Lloyd as a father right now. Just not. And I understand nothing has been, no convictions have happened or anything, but I just understand that when he came and get got that first modification and he asked that he be allowed to go back into his house, but you out here, instead of saying, well, you know, I'm going to give the house to her and let her have the house and my babies, so she and my babies will be comfortable, I'm going to move out until this is resolved. But no, he said, well, she out, let me go back to my house. It never occurred to him to make you comfortable first. Your Honor, in, if I might, may, in light of the court's position on this motion, would the court entertain a proposed order wherein, or, or consider a proposed order where Mr. Lloyd is able to have contact with the children so maybe he can take care of or at least offer some child care support to relieve uh, Ms. Lopez while she is recovering from her C-section. In what way does, what does this look like? Because that's still him having contact with her. Well, I mean, maybe there would be an interim, or maybe a family member who could get, meet and get the kids and maybe, I, I don't know, I'm talking, I'm thinking off the top of my head. I don't head know, in point. these COVID times that I'm comfortable with a newborn being passed around, number one. Number two, I'm mindful of the fact that they're not married, so he doesn't have a legal right to these children. So I'm not going to jump through any hoops that Mr. Lloyd didn't jump through. He popped out of here and had two babies with this child and um didn't secure everything he needed to do to secure it and then this incident took place when she was pregnant let me let me read y'all something because this is something i remember from being a magistrate um any person who commits the vat uh, commits the offense of battery against a female who is pregnant at the time of the offense shall upon conviction thereof be punished for a misdemeanor of a high and aggravated nature so even the law recognizes how egregious this is so um, y'all may need to go back to the drawing table to come up with some workable plan. But at this point, I'm not so um, enamored of Mr. Lloyd as a father and his ability to care for Miss Lopez that I'm willing to jump through hoops because he thinks him having a baby that he knew about when this incident happened is an emergency. Yeah. All right, for you're those right. reasons, the motion is denied. Okay, so any moving forward for any consideration of the court on this issue, I would need to file a, a motion with additional facts and alternatives. So, or could get a consent, which I don't know the state. You have to deal with them on that. But there's nothing at this time that convinces me that Mr. Lloyd needs to be there with Miss Miss. Because I'm telling you, his first shot at modifying this motion, he chose himself. Mm -hmm. And, that, and that's and that's course, clear to me, Your Honor. We would um, uh, respectfully dispute, dispute that. Um, Mr. Lloyd himself is is young and it just bought the home, and 
needed to be back in his home and maybe he did not fully appreciate um your honor's perspective on it but he's i, I can say no, i've met this young it's man not my perspective these your babies you a parent does whatever is necessary to secure the comfort and safety of their children so no it's not his perspective and this is why i'm saying he's not mature enough for me to trust that he's going to get back into this house and i can feel like these people are safe he's not mature enough that he have chosen his family over himself just bought the house didn't just buy the house i don't care it, who's living in the house doesn't matter as long as he paying the bills and so when you tell me he's young and he doesn't understand well very reason in a stressful situation where a woman has is postpartum that i shouldn't stick him right back in there for for this to blow up again so no not gonna do it um y'all come and up again, with something we, else I, I will entertain yeah. anything that you come up that is a workable plan but this is not it okay um, you're right and just say again the, i think in the beginning they were being informed probably by parents and grandparents and kind of relying on the pressures i don't think mr lloyd ever <laughs> intended for miss lopez not to be safe but there was advice coming to her from her family members so i won't belabor that point with the court but we will revisit the issue and uh try and issue um initiate some dialogue with miss hunter before we come back to the court to see you. if there's alternatives all right that'll work and judge with regards to the arraignment itself do you want us to remain online because we didn't take care of that issue no if he uh, are you willing to enter a plea today if not it's a no, no it's a not guilty we're not um, we're not guilty okay so you'll enter a not guilty plea mr um lloyd just make sure you keep in touch with your attorney so that should any um other information come from the state that she needs to communicate to you or if you have other information to communicate to her that there's no hindrance to you all figuring that out okay um all right so um that that concludes the motion um mr so is mr saw back so mr um wood we have a uh plea with your client and miss bermudez is on miss bermudez good morning judge hi thank you so um miss bermudez mr victor manuel um uh rangel lopez yes, is that okay. okay um mr so he's ready at this time mr wood he is your honor. all right mr um rangel lopez i'm going to swear the um interpreter you can go ahead and tell them that mr Bermuda. Senor Rangel lopez voy a juramentar al intérprete um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will faithfully interpret um, the proceedings before this court to the best of your skill and knowledge um, from English to Spanish and Spanish to English? I do. All right. Mr. Um, Rangel Lopez, raise your right hand for me, sir. Eh, señor Rangel Lopez, levante su mano derecha para mí, señor. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will faithfully, uh, that you will, um, th that uh, you will give true testimony today? Usted jura y afirma solemnemente que usted va a dar testimonio correcto y verdadero en el día de hoy. All right. Yes. So, sir, you are represented by attorney Wood, who is present. Señor, usted está siendo representado por el abogado, el abogado Wood, el cual está presente. Um, sí. Do you agree to have a hearing by video? ¿Está usted de acuerdo en tener su audiencia mediante video? Sí. Yes. Sí. Sir, you're charged with following too Hello. close and no license. Mr. Wood, what is your client plea to the offenses of following too close and no license? Uh, um, guilty, Your Honor. Señora, usted se le acusa de seguir un vehículo muy de cerca y de, no, de manejar sin licencia de conducir. Um, señor Wood, ¿cómo se declara su cliente eh, culpable? Okay. Sí. But, by entering a plea of guilty to counts one and two, you give up the right to have a trial. Al, al declararse culpable de los cargos unido, usted renuncia al derecho de tener un juicio. You give up the right to have the state prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. Renuncia al derecho de hacer que el Estado pruebe su culpabilidad más allá de una duda razonable. You give up the right to confront witnesses. Renuncia al derecho de enfrentar testigos. You give up the right to um, not incriminate yourself. Renuncia al derecho de no incriminarse a sí mismo. If you are not a United States citizen, a plea of guilty. Y si usted no es ciudadano estadounidense, una declaración de culpabilidad. 
or no contest could negatively impact your immigration status. O de no lo contenderé, podría afectar de forma negativa su estado emigratorio. All right. Mr. Um, uh, Rangel Lopez, do you agree to take a plea today? Señor Rangel Lopez, ¿está usted de acuerdo en hacer su declaración a cargos en el día de hoy? Sí. Sí. Yes. All right. Factual basis, interpreter speed. Ok, la determinación de hechos siguiendo la... Um, a la velocidad del intérprete. Judge, we could stipulate to the factual basis. Uh, y su señoría, estamos de acuerdo no, con la determinación no, de no, hechos. The state's recommendation is a $50 fine to count one. La recomendación del estado es una multa de $50 por el cargo número uno. An $8,000 fine to count two. Y una Ooh. multa de $1,000 por el cargo número dos. This is Mr. Wrangle's second uh, no license in five years. Este es el segundo cargo en el cual el señor Angel ha incurrido en un periodo de cinco años. He is also right. eligible to enter a NOLO plea if he desires. Él también es elegible para que se declare NOLO. All right. Mr. Wood? Judge, I would just ask that you accept the plea. All right. So, Mr. Um, Rangel Lopez, I'm going to accept your plea of guilty to counts one and two. Señor Rangel Lopez, yo voy a aceptar su declaración de culpabilidad al cargo número uno y al cargo número dos. I'll sentence you to pay a fine in the amount of $50 on count one, which will be $73.25 with the surcharges. Yo lo voy a sentenciar a que usted pague una multa de $50 dólares por uh, el cargo número uno, lo cual sería un total de $73.25 con las tarifas adicionales. And I'll sentence you on count two to pay a fine in the amount of $1,000, which is $1,320 with the surcharges. Y lo voy a sentenciar a pagar una multa de $1,000 dólares en el cargo número dos, lo cual sería un total de $1,320 con las tarifas adicionales. Do you need additional time to pay? Necesita usted tiempo adicional para pagar. Y no, ¿dónde puedo pagar? No, I could pay. All right. So, um, sir, I'm going to give you, because you're at Mr. Wood's office, I'm going to give you 30 days in which to pay. Uh, señor, por el hecho de que usted está en la oficina del señor Wood, yo le voy a dar 30 días para pagarlo. So that you can come down to the courthouse or pay online. Y usted puede venir al tribunal o lo puede pagar por internet. Okay. And if you come to the... What happened? Oh, shoot. I forgot that one. I guess I'll cut that one out. All right. Let's go on to the next one. All right, Mr. Ross, do you have um, something to show me, sir? Okay, that's fine. So I'm um, going. Yes, Ms. Cook. Um, Mr. Can we circle back to Marion Bunkley? Yeah. Um, oh, Lord. All right. I don't even know what calendar he was on. Was it the first <laughs> one? This 10 o'clock? Yes, Your Honor. Wow, he was on the 10th. Yeah. yeah, it's a wonder he made it to court at all. And it's a wonder I'm such a nice judge that I'm still willing to take his case, even though he was hours late. Ms. Ms. Um, Ms. Uh, Cook, what can we do for you and Mr. Bunkley? Um, Your Honor, we're asking, I guess really we're asking Ms. Hunter, um, who has graciously allowed us to reset this case uh, Oh, Lord. One other time. Um, <laughs> they're both present. Thankfully, I, I went against my own rule and I, I ended up calling the number without it being blocked. And I call every number on the list without it being blocked. I got a return phone call um, about 30 minutes ago, gave them the information. Um, the family has relocated their address. Um, it's not the address that the notices are being sent to. Um, well, that's what I tell everybody. Keep in touch with your attorney. If your contact information changes, it updates your attorney. Mr. Bunkley, you could have yeah, gotten a bit. I have written down here, bench warrant, bond forfeiture, which means you would have gotten arrested and the bond company would have come off your bond and whatever your mama paid to get you a bond would have been lost. Your Honor, um, my that's understanding my fault, is that the, 
the phone number that I, the, the good phone number was the mom's phone number. However, she has since turned it off because she's going through a divorce um, and she was basically being harassed. And so that's why I didn't have a way of contacting them. Um, she said she did do a um, form with the postal service to forward that mail yes. to the new By the time you get our notice, it's going to be too late. How old are you, Mr. Omarion? I'm 18. Okay, so it wasn't your mama's fault. It's your fault. You're an adult. Your mama felt like it right now because your foolishness. She could put you outside on the steps right now with all the stuff she wants you to keep. Not just the stuff, you know, that you think you ought to keep, but just the stuff she wants you to keep. Not the stuff she bought, but the stuff that she wants you to have. And she could put you on the steps. And you know what they would say? Well, he grown. <laughs> you don't have to take care of him anymore. So, sir, if you get in trouble, it is your responsibility to keep up with the court and with your attorney. You can't, you 18 now. And I know at any other point, you'd be up in your mama face talking about you grown. I'm 18. I'm 18. Well, <laughs> at the point that you need to be grown, this is that point. This is it's your face. responsibility to keep up with the court, not your mama. She didn't, she wasn't out here disorderly conducting. And she got enough on her plate with what's going on for her to have to worry about you too. Yes, ma'am. We clear? Yes, ma'am. No, don't lean back. Sit up like you got some life in you. And like right, you in court. <laughs> I wouldn't allow you to lean back in my courtroom. My deputy would already be standing over you. <laughs> That's not yes, messed up. It's business. It's what grown-ups do. He said his hair was messed up. I told him to take that thing Don't off. Don't nobody care head. about your hair. Yes, ma'am. Tell him. Yes, ma'am. You're on a quarantine. Ain't nobody. I, I got a dude had the nerve to get his hair cut on the video the last time I was on there. <laughs> so don't nobody care about your hair, monthly. I sure don't care about your hair. I ain't one of them little girls you're trying to impress. I don't care about your hair. I just want you to be an adult, and I want you to start taking some pressure off of your mama. She's dealing with a lot, and so what she doesn't need to deal with is you acting out. And I understand this situation is also disruptive for you. But what I want you to do is to the best of your ability through this situation, be a help to your mom. OK. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, because, you know, we already reset this case for you to appear based on the grace presented by Miss Cook. When I said, Miss Cook, uh, why are they not here? She said, Judge, if you could just please, please give us an opportunity to reset so I can find them. So Ms. Cook did a lot for you, sir. I just want you to know that. Um, so Ms. Cook, what is it? What more do you want to do for Mr. Bunkley? Your Honor, we, we, we're really asking the case to be reset to another calendar because Mr. Bunkley is going to email me all of his uh, his certificate of completion. Now he is not, he. one of the requirements from the state was to show that he has received his high school diploma. And I'll just be frank with the court at the moment. He has not done that. Um, he, in fact, he hasn't been able to re-enroll with the with the moving. Um, and then there was some loss of personal information. And the mom, she, they just haven't been able to get the information back yet with COVID and some other um, stepping stones. So he has not done that. But the anger management course, Your Honor, um, that should be taken care of. And we just want an opportunity to get that certificate of completion. All right, Mr. All right. Let's talk yeah. turkey. Um, are you gonna be able to graduate high school? Like if, if are you, is that an achievable goal within the time that we have? No, no, no ma'am. It, okay. it, it won't be, it won't be to next year. Okay. So thank you for being honest with me. Now, yes, let me just, cause I know your mama has beat this into your head, but let me just explain to you. You can't build on anything career wise without at least a, a, a high school diploma. Yes, ma'am. Because after that, everything else career-wise, whether you want to go into um, a, a career academy and get some uh, a skilled trade like HVAC, plumbing, all of those things I love because my family's been in the building trades and I know how much I have to pay to build and trade businessmen every time they fix something at my house. So mm -hmm. I know that that is a viable way to make a living and to take care of yourself. Um, but you can't do any of that without a diploma it puts you so far behind and so what i want you to understand is high school is not the time to play i mean you can enjoy your friends and hang out and all of that but you got to be about the business of getting that diploma 
but otherwise it puts you behind on everything else. And there's yeah. so much more in this world than just staying in your little bl four blocks or five blocks, wherever in your neighborhood um, that is not open to you because either you can't afford it or you don't have the skills for it. We clear? Yes, ma'am. So, Your Honor, may yes, I speak freely, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you for your words of encouragement because he needed to hear that from someone like you. But um, as far as his anger management, actually, while I was on hold, I was able to make an appointment. So uh, Monday at 3 p.m., I found a place. Um, they they weren't quite sure because uh, I explained to them that I wasn't given a time frame like four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. I was just told he needed anger management, but it's, I think they said it's sixty five dollars a week, um, depending on how many sessions he needs. But I'm I'm unsure of how many sessions he's he's gonna need or the court is requesting. Ms. Cook. It's the state that's requesting. I would to the state, yes, because I'm not sure. Ms. I know Cook. they want at least eight hours for sure. Ms. Hunter. Yes, Your Honor, we would need at least eight hours. Eight All hours, right. okay. So um Ms. Thomas, do you Ms. Thomas, do you have a list of like the anger management providers in Clayton County? We're actually in Columbus, Georgia, Your Honor. Oh, I'm sorry. Ooh, that's that's my um that's my buddy down there, uh Judge Richardson. Oh um, <laughs> you know Judge Ben Richardson. I ain't been before him, but I know who that is. <laughs> and been before him. <laughs> that is my buddy. Um, I don't go to court for child support or and and this year or, or my divorce. Other than that, I, I obey the law. Okay, so, so um <laughs> li listen to me carefully. It, yes, ma'am. We will accept uh, a court approved anger management program. Um, yes, through the state court of um, of uh, Columbus, um, Georgia, which is um, uh, which county is that? Oh, Muskogee. Muskogee. That's right. Yes, so if you um, contact them and get that information through the because um, it might be a cheaper and b it will have the format that we're looking for. So yes, if you go through Muskogee County, if they need anything, um, just tell them that it Judge Hayward has ordered you to do it, but is willing to accept a program in Muskogee County. That way it's not as hard for you all to get, either get back and forth to where you need to be or yes, just to get it under that. And as, as long as you do it under that program, then we'll go ahead and accept that. And what I'll do is okay. I will put you on, Miss um, Val, what's our dates in May or do we have a May calendar? Set yet? Um, we don't have one, but I can give a date. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Now, Mr. Bunkley, like I said, even if you have to get your GED, the the the, the basis for everything else you do in your life is going to depend on that diploma. Because I know some people, trust me, you can make some changes. I know some people who were in your situation in high school and had to end up getting a GED and didn't get their diploma, but they had to like go back and figure it out. And they ended up going to med school. Um, I know one particular person who ended up doing that, like got his GED, then went to community college, then went from community college to a four year institution, did so well doing that, then they went to med school. So trust me, you are not in any way prevented from doing the best that you can do in life, but you got to start now. And you yes, got to be serious about it. Because just playing around, you gonna end up where you in some dire straits, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you don't want to be living with your mama too much longer because uh, mm -hmm. she need her freedom. She yeah. need in, a, in about two years <laughs> to be able to get on a cruise when she want to get on a cruise and she need to be able to do those kinds of things. It, it's important. Mm -hmm. Trust me. And it's four of them. It's, I've got four boys. The, the he's, oh, he's, I got 20, 18, 16, and five years old. Oh, Lord, you went back. Oh, bless yes, your heart. Um, so and trust me, I'm not one to talk because I got uh two little ones myself uh at a ripe age so i'm gonna just say i'm gonna pray for you but yeah thank you um, <laughs> omarion don't be a problem for your mama okay yes ma'am all right so i'm gonna reset you to may 13th make sure yes, that if anything changes about your contact information please make sure you let miss cook know so that she won't go looking for you okay yes ma'am i'm going to update it with her right now 
All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, stay you on. Judge Hayward. God Thank bless you. you. Have a great evening. Thank you. You ma'am. You too, ma'am. Stay on until you get all of that stuff updated and then you're free to yes, go. Okay. He's probably more embarrassed that his mom's making it sitting there with him doing that. And he's more worried about his hair than anything. Yes, ma'am. Right. Typical teenager. Do we boy. have anything else? I'm looking there. We have one more person in the courtroom. That's Mr. Ross. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Ross. All right. Did you have that information for yep. your uh, distracted driving? I have my handheld device right here. Okay. Look at you. Is that sufficient? Yes, ma'am. Um, Miss um, Hunter. Oh, Lord. I'm on 11. Uh, oh. 10, 12. Miss Hunter or Miss um, uh, Muhammad, is that sufficient for Mr. Thomas Antoine Ross, uh, Ross Antoine Thomas Jr. on uh, the four o'clock calendar? I'm sorry, I didn't see what was yes, provided. Yes, hold it up again. Oh, okay. Yes, Your Honor, that's sufficient. We will, the state will dismiss that case. Okay, sir, your case will be dismissed. You're free to go at this time. Thank you. All right, and then the last case is Miss Simmons. I'm waiting for Mr. Sud to come out um of the breakout room and um i believe that is all correct do we have anything else is anybody else in the in the pod no okay you can shut it down sir thank you so much you, have a good day, you too all right that was a fun one nobody got hurt really bad but it was it was good stuff let's go over to this next one and see it's been so long since I've clipped these. I forgot which I forgot what's what. I'm not gonna lie, but that just makes it more fun to watch again. Hang on. I don't think we took Miss Griggs. No, we're we're about to take Miss. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Griggs. Come on up to the podium for me. Um, Miss Douglas, do you have an announcement for Miss Douglas, Miss Cook? Yes, Your Honor. She's gonna be. It's gonna be a no low plea. Okay. All right. So, Miss Griggs, um, raise your right hand for me. You solemnly swear or affirm any testimony you give in this matter will be true. Yes. All right. You're represented by Attorney Cook, who's here with you um, on the video. And do you agree to have a video hearing because of COVID-19? Yes. You can put your hand down, ma'am. So, Ms. Cook, your client is charged on case 2020-CR-04392 with battery family violence, battery, simple battery family violence, and simple battery. How does she plead to these offenses? Your Honor, she would like to enter a guilty plea to count one under, I'm using her first offender. She wants to. All right. And counts two, three, and four will be no pros or merge. No pros, Your Honor. All right. So, ma'am, by entering a plea of guilty under the First Offender Act, you give up the right to have a trial by jury or judge. You give up the right to have the state prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You give up the right to have a presumption of innocence in your favor. You give up the right to confront witnesses, subpoena witnesses, present testimony and evidence on your behalf, to not incriminate yourself or present any testimony or evidence against yourself. And if you're not a United States citizen, a plea of guilty or no contest could negatively impact your immigration status. Do you understand all of these things, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. All right. Factual basis and um, recommendation, please. Yes, on May 30th, 2020, officers responded to 7599 Becker Court, Jonesboro, Georgia, Clayton County, in reference to a disturbance. They made contact with Thomas Griggs III, which is the defendant's husband. Um, he advised that he told Mrs. Griggs that he would not be available um, on that date because he had a lunch date at that noon. Um, at, at that time, Ms. Griggs took his cell phone and ran upstairs to the bedroom to check his phone. Um, after reading some messages, she became upset. Um, the victim did attempt to retrieve his phone, and at that time, he was pushed by Mrs. Griggs, and then she started to scratch his neck and his face. The officers did observe visible red scratch marks to the right and left side of his neck. Um, at that time, um, she was taken into custody and charged with battery family violence. The state's recommendation in this case is 12 months probation. Um, that she complete a family violence intervention program, pay a $200 fine, complete 40 hours of community service, and have no violent or harassing contact with the victim, Thomas Griggs III. All right, Ms. Um, Cook. Yeah, no, that's our understanding of the recommendation. Um, Ms. Griggs, is, uh, 
she's she's well aware. She's learned a, a valuable lesson from this. At the time, um, during the incident, Your Honor, they were just going through a rough patch in their marriage. Um, so we're just asking the court um, to accept the recommendation and her plea on the first offender. I'm hopeful that she will complete the conditions with no problem. All right, Ms. Briggs. Um, so you and your husband are gonna y'all remaining in this relationship? Is that correct? Correct. All right. Have y'all considered some kind of um, counseling? I have, Your Honor, but um, my husband hasn't. Okay, I say that only because whatever caused this conflict now could pop up again if y'all don't resolve it. Um, and if it's the situation where you think there might be other people involved, but you know, what one way or the other, open wounds, open wounds, gotta close them. Then that's not gonna change until y'all work that out, okay? So I just say that because I don't want to see you back here. So I'm going to accept your plea of guilty under first offender. I'll sentence you to 12 months probation um, to pay a, a fine in the amount of $200 and to take a court of uh, $200 fine is going to be 275 with the surcharges and to take a family violence intervention program course um, and do 40 hours of community service. You're not to have any violent or harassing contact with Thomas Griggs III. Ms. Um, Griggs, I'm going to put you in a breakout room in a moment with Ms. Mrs. Thomas. Mrs. Thomas is going to um, help you understand all that is involved with probation, all of your requirements for probation, and then um, you ask her any questions that you might have. Our probation office so that they together to make some changes we can do that but they can make sure that you successfully complete it because yours is even more um important because you're using your first offender stat uh status for that yes ma'am you had a question yes ma'am you were breaking so i didn't get what oh you i'm said. sorry um so what i was saying is want to make sure that if you have any difficulties doing what I'm asking you to do, um, I got this sunshine that's covering my mouth too. And sometimes it's easier to know what people are saying if you can read their lips. How's that? Okay. So um, if you have any difficulty um, doing what I'm asking you to do, please make sure you share that with your um, probation officer and ask for assistance because we do not want you to mess this up because this is your first offender. Um, and so if you successfully complete, that's wonderful. And this, you only have one shot at this, okay? No. Um, All right. The other thing is, um, what is, oh, did I have another one? Um, no. Did you have another question for me? Um, with the community service as well as um, now, you you did say with the court will provide me with that information. Or do I pick who I? Um, no, ma'am. We're going to provide you with the information. And a lot of our providers um, are doing things to allow us to do socially distance um, things. So we're trying our best to accommodate every, you know, everyone under COVID um, so that we're not putting anybody in jeopardy through our order, okay? Yes, ma'am. And what if I work full time? Are there any um, community service providers that do after five? They may, there may be. Or the weekend? There may be. Okay. Hold on now, um, Miss. Let me ask one question of Miss Cook. Miss Cook, is Miss um, Lewis gonna be a probation plea also? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is put both of y'all in the um, pod so you can speak with Miss Thomas. Alternately, she'll speak with you and then she'll speak with Miss Lewis. So if you have a seat, as soon as I'm able to put you in the pod, then she'll speak with all of the individuals who need the probation officer, okay? All right, so have a seat. Ashley Lewis. Hello. Hi, Ms. Lewis. Um, raise your right hand for me, ma'am. You solemnly swear or affirm any testimony you give in this matter will be true. Let me repeat after you. Okay. Uh, no, ma'am, just tell me if you're going to tell the truth. Yeah, <laughs> All right, you can put your hand down. So Ms. Cook uh, is your attorney and you're having this um, video hearing because of COVID. Do you agree to have the hearing by video? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but um, what is your client uh, plea to the offense, Ms. Cook? 
Yeah, she's entering a guilty plea to count one, the only count. Okay, by entering a plea of guilty to criminal trespass under 2020 CR 04378, Ms. Lewis, you give up the right to have a trial. You give up the right to have the state prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You give up the right to have the presumption of innocence favor. You give up the right to confront witnesses, subpoena witnesses, present testimony and evidence on your behalf. And that's where I could probably quote her word for word and all this. I've listened to it so many times. If you're not a United States citizen, a plea of guilty or no contest could negatively impact your immigration status. Do you understand all of these things? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, factual basis, please. Yes, Your Honor. On April 30th, 2020, officers responded to 163 Old Mill Court, Atlanta, Georgia, 30349 Clayton County regarding a disturbance. Um, they did speak with an independent witness, Mr. Gregory Glover, um, who stated that the defendant came to the incident location, jumped out of a vehicle that another female was driving. At that time, the defendant then started a physical fight with the victim at her apartment. Um, the defendant then kicked the bottom half of the victim's apartment window and ultimately threw a rock through the victim's apartment window, um, damaging the window, Your Honor. Look at her. She's sitting there like, yeah, that's what I did. I did that. No, I'm just kidding. It's always the little cute prissy ones that have such an attitude and get so angry. I think I was one of those growing up. Um, the officers did observe the damage um, and she was charged with criminal trespass. Who's the victim in the case? It seems that the victim was just uh, the door. Well, the a door. friend, I guess oh, it was supposedly <laughs> maybe an old friend, somebody that used to be a friend. Okay. The door. Um, the state's recommendation is 12 months probation that she complete an anger management course. Um, she has to have no contact with the victim, Nadia Dowdle, and she is not to return to the incident location. Ms. Um, Cook. Um, Your Honor, that's not, let me just, for clarification, there's no restitution being asked for in this case, correct? Um, no, not at this time. Okay. Um, Your Honor, that is our understanding of the recommendation. We are asking um, the court, though, if you would allow um, probation to terminate after completion of, uh, or suspend it um, after uh, completion of the anger management class. Um, Miss Lewis was um, attempting to get her phone from inside of the residence um, and did not make the best decision as to how to go about getting her phone from inside the residence. Um, Lewis, how old are you, ma'am? I'm 23 years old. 20 who? 23. You know, my um, sister-in-law has a phrase for this age. She calls it 20 stupid. Um, and I don't mean that to be insulting, but y'all people in the 20s, y'all don't make very good decisions, especially when it comes to friendships and interpersonal relations and fighting over dudes and things. Um, so uh, as you grow, ma'am, I want you to make better decisions. I want before you hot head off and then let your friends hype you up, girl, we riding. Let's let's posse up, get in a car and ride. I want y'all to have that conversation and then sit down and think about the consequences. Well, what happened the last time I posseed up and got in the car and rolled? See, that's, that's not a good idea. I mean, I get it, but it's not a good idea. There are better ways to get your phone back. You could have gone to the police and filed a, a police report and, and got, gotten your phone back, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, so you don't always have to like ride out. It, always, it ain't always on 10. We got it? Because yes, as a 23-year-old person, I hope this is a valuable lesson um, that you somehow, sometimes you just got to, you got to give yourself a minute to feel that anger and work through it. And then once that goes, then think clearly about what the consequences are of your actions. Because I don't want you messing up your record in and out of jail with foolishness. Okay? Yes, ma'am. It's not going to happen every year. Uh-huh. I'm sure. Uh-huh. So um, <laughs> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put you in the breakout room. You and Miss Griggs are going to have the opportunity to speak with Mrs. Thomas. Miss Thomas is going to explain all of the court sentence. And in your case, it's going to be 12 months probation, an anger management course, and no contact with Nadia Dowdell and no going back to Nadia's 
place um, uh, of residence. And um, so Ms. Uh, uh, Thomas is going to explain everything to you. Please ask her questions and please understand that probation officers are not here to make your life miserable, especially during COVID. They're here to make sure you successfully complete your probation. So ask questions and let them know what's going on until you have finished everything. Okay. So I'm going to put you on the breakout room and um, then we'll come back as soon as Mrs. Thomas has finished speaking with Ms. Griggs and with Ms. Lewis. So the breakout room, the pod is moving to breakout room number five to join Ms. Uh, Thomas, okay? Yeah, and my internet broke up. Did you approve the suspending of the probation? After oh yeah, and I'll suspend after, uh, probation will suspend after she is completed. And you text the Taryn to make sure she on her Zoom. Taryn is on her Zoom iPhone. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you could hear me. <laughs> yes, ma'am. That's what happens when you don't mute when you're coming into court. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Let me mute it. Oh my goodness. We get a lot done during these cases, ladies and gentlemen, but I tell you it is mayhem and foolishness sometimes. All right. So while the breakout room is being handled, let me go through the calendar again. I know some of you are coming in for the three o'clock calendar. Thank you for your patience. We're actually um, doing really well on time today. I know it doesn't appear that way to you, but trust us, um, we are doing really well. Um, and as soon as the, the pod comes back, we'll be able to handle some more cases. Mr. Sue, do you have an um, an announcement in Mr. Brown's case. Yes, Mr. Brown is ready to plead uh, guilty. All right, and Ms. Uh, Douglas is going to be a plea also. Is that correct? Okay, Ms. That is correct, Your Honor. Okay, so um, Mr. Brown, where are you? There you are. Mr. Brown, can you um, unmute? Raise your right okay. hand for me, can sir. You, you hear me now? I hear you, raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm any testimony you give in this matter will be true. Yes, ma'am. Okay, you can put your hand down. Sir, you're represented by Mr. Sue, and um, we're having hearings by video. Do can you, you hear me? Yeah, do you wish to have your hearing by video? Yes, ma'am. By entering a plea of, uh, what's your client plea to the offense of criminal trespass on case 2020CR04393? Mr. Brown, please guilty. By entering a plea of guilty, you give up the right to have a trial by jury or judge. You give up the right to have the state prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You give up the right to present evidence and testimony to not incriminate yourself. Um, you give up the right um, to, <clears throat> Um, and, and if you're not a United States citizen, a plea of guilty or no contest could negatively impact your immigration status. Do you understand all of these things, Mr. Brown? Yes, ma'am. All right. Factual basis and recommendation for me. On May 13, 2020, officers responded to 7021 Terra Boulevard, room 337, rural Georgia, 30236, Clayton County, Georgia, regarding a disturbance. Upon arrival, they did speak with the victim, Sharon Moulton, um, who stated that the, that the defendant got upset with her over some cards that she did not have. Um, at that time, um, he did break her phone and threw another phone over the rail onto the parking lot. Um, she stated that when she told him she was going to call the police, that was when he took the phone and broke it. Um, the officers did observe the damaged um, cell phone um, and the defendant was charged with criminal trespass. Um, the state's recommendation in this case is 12 months probation, that he complete an anger management course, pay a $200 fine, have no contact with the victim, and do not return to the incident location. All right, Mr. Seth? That's my understanding of the uh, recommendation. Mr. Brown has requested that uh, the probation be terminated upon completion of the anger management course and the payment of the fine. I'll suspend. All right. So, Mr. Brown, I'm going to accept your plea of guilty. I'll sentence you to 12 months probation to take an anger management course to pay a fine in the amount of two hundred dollars. It's going to be two seventy five, I believe, with the surcharges. Um, and you're not to go back to that location and you're not to have contact with uh, Ms. Sherilyn Moulton. Um, sir, you good and grown looking at you, yes, uh, bearded and everything. You know how to make better decisions. Is this correct? 
That's so I'm trying what to I'm gonna don't tell me what you was trying to do. Just just make better decisions. That's what I'm asking no. you to do. Huh? Okay. So I'm no, gonna I was trying to come. Break. Okay. Don't tell me. I was tr I'm I'm gonna trust that this is not gonna happen again. So as soon as you do the anger management course and pay the fine, <laughs> um, then this will suspend and you don't have to keep going to probation, okay? So when Miss Thomas comes back, I'm gonna okay. be able to put you in a breakout room with her. So just hold on and wait for Miss Thomas, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Just hold on. All right, Miss Douglas, raise your right hand for me, ma'am. Do solemnly swear or affirm any testimony you give in this matter will be true. Yes, ma'am. All right. So, Ms. Douglas, you're before the court. You can put your hand down on 2020CR04388 um, for no tag, expired or invalid tag, and no insurance. You're represented by Ms. Cook. Ms. Cook, your um, client is no eligible for count two. What is she pleading to count one? Oh, she's not no for count one. Um, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Guilty to count one. It was... It's an expired tag, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay, yes, guilty to count one is fine. Okay, so I have Miss Douglas uh, on this case, 202CR04388. You're entering a plea of guilty to count one, no tag. And to count two, you're entering a plea of no low. By doing so, you give up the right to have a trial by jury or judge. You give up the right to have the state prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You give up the right to have the presumption of innocence in your favor. You give up the right to confront witnesses, subpoena witnesses, present testimony and evidence to not incriminate yourself or present any testimony or evidence against yourself. And if you're not a United States citizen, a plea of guilty or no contest could negatively impact your immigration status. Do you understand all of these things? Yes, ma'am. All right, factual basis, please, and recommendation. The facts on the pleadings, Your Honor, the state's recommendation for count one is a $100 fine. Count two is a $200 fine. All right, Ms. Um, Cook, how much time is your client gonna need? Count one, I'll um, sentence her to pay on count one, $100, which is gonna be 141 with the surcharges, a $200 fine on count two, which is gonna be $280 with the surcharges. Um, and she can have up to 60 days with no probation. How do we ask for the 60 days? All right, so Ms. Douglas, what I need you to do is to send your email address to Ms. Brenda through the chat room. Go ahead and chat that to her now. Make sure you double check it to make sure it's correct. Um, and you'll have 60 days in which to pay. If you do not pay within the 60 days, either online by phone or by coming into the um, clerk to the state court um, at 9151 Terra Boulevard, um, if you don't mm -hmm. pay within the 60 days, then an arrest warrant will issue. Okay. Okay. All right. What's the What's the name you said, Brenda? It's Brenda. Wait. Yeah. Brenda. I have she says we're going to arrest you so kindly, doesn't she? <laughs> if you don't do this, I will arrest you. Her email address. Okay, so we'll send it. We'll send your email address to Miss Brenda. Okay, Miss Douglas. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Mister um, Brown. Is, did you have any other questions for me, sir? I can't hear you, sir. You're muted. No, ma'am. Okay, you're free to go no, at this time. We'll get that information to you. Okay. Um, one thing I want to um ask you though, Judge, uh, yes. the uh, the classes that I have to take, uh, how would I go about that? Would that come in the mail? Would I get an email? Or did you talk to Miss Thomas? Miss Thomas? Yeah. Did you? You haven't no. had a chance to talk to Miss Thomas yet. Uh. -uh. She's gonna explain all that to you. She's just in the. She's talking to two other people right now. Okay. So what? I I just hold on. Yeah. Just hold on. Thank you. She's okay. she's talking to two people right now. As soon as she's finished, I'm going to put you in a breakout room with her, okay? Yes, ma'am. I just don't want to do it now because then um, she won't be able to respond to you right now. Okay. All right. So um, anybody aware? Oh, Grimes. La Laquania Grimes. Did we have a restitution hearing for that? Is there anybody seeking restitution still? The state will withdraw that motion. All right. 
All right, and so um, is there anybody else aware of anything I've forgotten on the two o'clock calendar? Intérprete de español. Hablo español, pero sí entiendo bastante. Sí, sí lo entiendo. ¿Usted entiende inglés? Sí. O si me fue, digamos, no sé, para explicarme mejor. Si Mr. Quiere. Mr. Montoya yeah. is here. He said he understands English, so I don't know if he's going to need or not, Your Honor. Okay, this is kind of a different one because this is traffic, but there's an accident that occurred, and they're going to actually show us some police footage of it. So it's kind of different for her courtroom. Okay. Um, Hello. Yes. Hello. Okay. okay, ladies and gentlemen, don't just say hello. I'm in the middle of calling the calendar. If you have a question, just wait until after I've called the calendar and I'll take all questions, okay? If okay. you can see yourself on the screen, I can see you. All right. All right. All right. Baker, Aaron, Guy, Haywood. All right. Mr. Yes, I see you and hear you. Mr. Haywood, did you wish to have a trial or did you wish to um, speak with the state? Speak with the state. All right. All right. One moment. Christian Lozano Cruz. Christian Lozano Cruz. Christian Lozano Cruz. I see him, but he's not unmuted. I'm sorry, I was muted. Yes, ma'am. All right. So, sir, did you wish to have a trial um, or did you wish to um, speak with the state about a possible plea? I uh, speak with the state, but I didn't hear what I was. Uh, um, so you're I... char charged with too close, following too close with an accident. OK, yes, ma'am. I would like to speak with the state. How old are you? Uh, 20. OK. Arthur James Mitchell. Arthur James Mitchell. Travion Xavier White. All right, so Mr. White, you have three charges, defective equipment, speeding 21 to 25 over, and license not on person. Um, did you wish to consider a plea or did you wish to have a trial? Or court appointed attorney. All right. So, Ms. Val, let's appoint for Mr. Dravion uh, White and reset. All right. Uh, so, Ms. Your White, Honor. Yes. I'm sorry. Do you mind if I attempt to talk with Mr. White first, just because of some of the charges on here, we might be able to work something out. That's up to Mr. White. If not, I understand. I just figured I'd throw that out there just in case. Which one? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Dravion White. I apologize. Um, I don't, depending on charge, the last time I talked to the, um, they wasn't trying to reason with me because. Okay. Well, then okay, we'll, give, we'll go ahead and give you an attorney, sir. I, All I, right. I, I'll stay to talk with her about it. I, okay. I talk. He talks about it like he's the one that's in control. Uh, they weren't willing to reason with me about it. All about right. It. Just have a seat for me. Okay. All right. All right. So Glover, trial, Porter, bench warrant was issued on Porter. Anyone here on Porter may be excused. Vandergrift, bench warrant was issued on Vandergrift. Anyone here on Vandergrift may be excused. So those are the um, individuals who are here for bench warrants. They may be excused at this time. And um, ready on Glover. Hi, um, Judge Howard. I also wasn't given the opportunity to receive a court appointed um, attorney. And okay. I also don't see my accuser here in the courtroom. I don't know if they're. He's asking about his accuser. When I first heard this, I thought, oh no, he's going to be a sovereign. Fear not, though, ladies and gentlemen. He's not. 
um, online or not, but I don't know who I'm facing as my accuser. Okay, so a lot of the officers and witnesses are here. Um, so there's two screens, so it's hard to see everyone. The state has announced that they're ready for trial. However, if you sought a um, an attorney and you weren't appointed after the um, arraignment, uh, then we'll go ahead and give you an a, a reset to have an appointment made if that's what you wish. A court appointed attorney? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Um, Glover, we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll appoint and reset. Um, they'll contact you. If not, then once you come to court, they will be here in court with you. Okay. Okay. But what happens if my accuser is not here today? I, they've already announced ready, which means that they have the witnesses that they wish to bring. Okay. So, um, I'm sorry. All right. That's fine. Yeah, if they had not announced ready, the case would be dismissed, but they've announced ready, which means that they've their witnesses that they subpoenaed to be here to prosecute the case against you, they're here. Okay. All, All right. right. Anything else, sir? Oh, no. So okay. Good. Yes, sir. Just look for your notice in the mail. And your honor, those other cases, um, including Mr. Glover's that we reset, can those witnesses also be excused? Yes, Glover was a, a reset. You may be excused at this time. Uh, Tate was reset. Thompson reset. You may be excused at this time. And Dravion White, uh, that was reset. All right, um, so for trial next, I have Platon. Excuse me, Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I said I would stay the arm. Um, okay, so anyone here on white, hold on, please. Don't leave yet. Straight me on white. Okay, all right, so Platon. Yes, ma'am. All right, um, state's ready on Platon? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you want uh, me to? We're doing the trial first. You want me to talk to the other people trial first? Because we'll have officers waiting too long on the trials if if we go to do the not a the, problem. The discussions first. Y'all watch her reaction after this guy irritates her. All right, Mr. Uh, Platon and everyone else can listen up to these are the same instructions I'll give you when it's time. Um, you're here on uh, the case the state is prosecuting you for the offense yeah. of um, too fast, fast for condition. condition. Yes, sir. I got this. <laughs> you talk a lot. <laughs> I I'll let you know when you can talk. All right, so they're re they're prosecuting you for two fast for conditions, 2023-TK-00149. The state's burden, it's the state has the burden to prove the case against you beyond a reasonable doubt. You have a Fifth Amendment right to um, not incriminate yourself. You do not have to give any evidence or testimony in this case. You have the right to ask questions of any witnesses that they bring, but please don't make any statements until such time as we determine whether you're going to testify. Um, at if at the time that the state has presented their case, you wish to present evidence and testimony on your behalf, then you may do so. But at first, first I will um, talk to you about your rights and the fact that you are waiving your right to remain silent in order to freely and voluntarily offer testimony. Did you understand what I just told you, Mr. Platon? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, Ms. Williams, you may call your first witness. And the state calls Officer Tyvon McCullough. All right, Officer McCullough. All right, raise your right hand for me. You solemnly swear or affirm any testimony you give in this matter will be true. Okay, you gotta, I don't know if the headphones is messing up your audio because I can't hear you. Yes, ma'am. That's much better. Yes, sir. All right. You can put your hand down. Mr. Platon, I still have to see you. Mr. Platon, I still have to see you. Please turn your camera back on. 
I think he might be frozen because this camera's on for me, but he's not moving. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's somewhere where the time difference is really big. Let's see if he comes back in a second. If not, then we'll move on to the Turner trial. I'm sorry, my service went out. Okay, so Mr. Platon, um, we're getting ready to start. All right, go ahead, Ms. Um, Williams. You can call, um, you've uh, sworn your witness. You can go ahead. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Can you please state your name? My guest, Nat Platon. Not you, Mr. Platon. Mr. Yes. Platon, not you. The, oh, I'm sorry. Quit. Right, my god and what do you do for a living <laughs> detective for the clayton county police department and how long have you been with the clayton county police department I didn't right, hear that. We're, we're losing every other thing you're saying seven years okay yeah, there that's we go. better and before becoming a detective did you have any other job assignments uniform patrol what were some of your job duties as part of patrol? Traffic control, responding to vehicle accidents. And are you post certified officer? Yes, ma'am. And were you post certified on December 19th of 2022? Yes, ma'am. Uh, do you recall responding to a vehicle accident located on I 285 near Old Dixie Road? I do. And was that on December 19th of 2022? Correct. And is that location here in Clayton County? It is. And when you arrived on scene, were you in a marked patrol car? I was. And were you in uniform? I was. Can you describe what you saw when you arrived on scene? I saw a overturned tractor trailer blocking the lane on the ramp to Old Dixie. And how, how do you describe what you mean by overturned? The truck is on the side. And was this located in the curve of the ramp? It was. And did you make contact with uh, the driver of the 18 wheeler? Yes, ma'am, I did. Uh, did you check to see if, he, if that person was hurt or needed assistance? Uh, he had minor injuries. And do you remember when the, uh, were you, did you identify the driver while you're on scene? Yes. How did you do that? Um, he gave me his ID. And do you recall the name of the ID that he gave you? Uh, Mr. Plantone. Do you, and do you see that same individual here on the call? Yes, I do. Jumping around last night. Uh, can you, Briefly, or can you describe him as best you can? Back me up, ball head. Now, did you speak with him while you were on the scene? I did. And what did you speak with him about? Um, reference to the vehicle being overturned. What did he tell you happened? Um, he was negotiating around the the curve. And he hit his brakes and he said he had a brake malfunction and his truck overturned. Did he talk did did he talk to you about the the speed in which he was going prior to the turn? I don't recall. So based off of your conversation with him, what did you do next? He was issued a citation for two passport conditions. And can you describe what the road conditions were like? Um, the roads were dry, but there was a deep curve um, going up the hill. Okay. Now, Officer McCullough, were you wearing uh, a body camera during this in incident? I was. And was your body camera operational? It was. And did it capture... Was was it working properly on the day of this incident? It was. And did it capture the events that took place during the investigation? 
Yes. Are you aware of how your body camera records and saves videos? Yes. Can you briefly describe what that procedure is? Yes, ma'am. Once I activate my emergency equipment, the uh, body camera automatically starts. And then it records until I turn it off, mainly turn, turn it off. And I enter the case number and save it under the vehicle accident tab. And how, where is it saved to? To a cloud. Okay. And do you have the ability to change or alter any devices once or any videos once they've been uploaded to the cloud? No. And would you recognize um, your body camera video if I showed it to you again today? I would. Uh, I'm going to, for the record, I'm going to play the first seven, uh, first 10 seconds for identification purposes. Officer McCullough, do you recognize the portion of the video that I just played? And is this an accurate reflection of the beginning portion of the video from the state the day of the incident? Judge Tammy says that's probably him, the one that's right there talking. Yeah. To your knowledge, does this video appear to have been changed or altered in any way? No. Your Honor, at this time, the state's going to turn to the body camera video of Officer McCullough to evidence of state's one. All right, Mr. Plateau, any objections to us seeing the video? Uh, no. Okay. All right, the video, video will be admitted in States 1. I couldn't have got out. I would have gotten out. Did you see the accident or you just came no, up? No, came no, up. coming by the truck turned out. Like, oh, shit. And I see a guy banging on the truck. So I banged all the way up right now. I okay. ran over him. Guys, you can't get him out. So I jumped on top. He jumped on top. I trying to bust him out. I told him to cover it up. Got him out. Got him out of the back. While they're working on him, take picture of these tags. Truck and trailer. You can write it down. Okay. Just remember what state. Eleven twenty four. Officer McCullough, was the video was the tractor trailer in the video the same tractor trailer that you saw on the day of the incident flipped over? Yes, ma'am. And the gentleman that was sitting on the sidewalk receiving medical attention, was that Mr. Paton? Yes, ma'am. At this time, Your Honor, I have no further questions. All right. Mr. Platon, did you have any questions of this officer? Um, the questions that I have um, is, is the ticket that he wrote me and said that I was going in a fast condition. So... My thing is, um, uh -uh, uh -uh. Mr. Platon, remember, you're not testifying yet. You're just asking him questions about okay. the testimony he's given. Just questions. Um, well, I don't have any question about his testimony. No. Okay. All right. Does the state have another witness? No, you're on. Serious. All right. Um, Mr. Platon, the state has rested with this witness in this video. Um, did you wish to enter evidence and testimony? Mm, no, I just want to resolve this issue. So let's see what, how can I resolve it? Okay. All right. So, um, <clears throat> Mr. Platon has, um, it, within his right is going to remain silent. The state has offered evidence and testimony. Um, the, does the state wish to enter argument at this time? Yes, your honor. Go ahead, ma'am. 
Um, Your Honor, based on the testimony of the officer, he came to an accident in which there was an overturned tractor trailer, which was presented with video evidence as well as uh, the court saw on the as the tractor trailer was on its side. Um, and additionally, as the video did show in confirmation of the officer's testimony, the curve that the trailer was trying to negotiate was a very steep and, um, and deep curve uh, in which he the based on the conversation that the officer had with the defendant, he attempted to negotiate, but um, due to another issue, he was moving too fast and could not um, utilize his brakes properly in order to um, not make the curve. Thus, based on the evidence presented on um, both the testimony and the video, um, the state would submit that it has been its burden that the defendant was driving too fast for the condition that he was in and that he did not negotiate the curve correctly and caused his tractor trailer to overturn um, and luckily only caused a single vehicle accident uh, in this case, which could have been worse had there been other cars on the road. And we ask that you find him guilty. All right. Mr. Platon, did you have any um, argument that you wish to make based on the evidence that was presented? Yes. Um, I mean, yes, I lost um, that. What the accident caused me because I lost brake. Um, I wasn't going too fast. There's, there's two. A tractor trailer have two brakes. There's a brake for the trailer and the tractor and the tractor. So when I press on a brake, Mr. Platon, yes. I asked if you wish to testify, and you told me no. Now you're testifying. Jesus. I mean, not. Yeah, but what what I'm hearing is what she said. <laughs> I mean. I don't care. Nope. Honestly, 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 Excuse honestly. Me? honestly, Officer Brown, your microphone is not muted. Okay. Oh, All right. So, um, at this time, based on the testimony and evidence presented by the state, the court is going to find you guilty of too fast for conditions. Um, does the state have a um recommendation? Yes, Your Honor. Based on the defendant's driving history, uh, he he has well, he doesn't have uh, many moving violations. It's got a, it's it's mainly just failure to appear in a um, child seatbelt restraint. Um, but based on the the testimony and the evidence, the state would ask for um, a three hundred dollar fine. All right, so Mr. Platon, the court is going to um, assess a fine in the amount of $300. With the surcharges, it'll be $444. Did you wish to pay that um, within 30 days or did you need up to 60 days or more to pay? I need uh, 60 days. All right. Um, uh, is, it, is, is it this gonna be a point on my license? It, it probably will, but that was the whole point of you taking time between the arraignment and the trial was to see what effect it would have on your license. We can't tell you that, but you have access to that information either through your employer or through other means. I mean, that was my that, that was the main thing. That's why I took it to trial to like, you know, to, to see the, the proof okay, that, that they had me going. Mr. Platon. I tell you this in the arraignment is that we don't know what the rules are for the federal DOT and the state DOT. So we give you that time. When you say you want a trial, you have plenty of time before we go to trial to figure that out before you come to trial. Did you ask anybody any questions about how it would affect your license? Um. No, I didn't ask. I didn't ask. So, I mean, this is the, that's why I'm, I was waiting to talk to a judge to ask, the, you know, if it's going to affect okay, my license. Okay, sir, we don't, we don't give that information because we don't have it. I tell you that in arraignment is that if you're worried about your CDL, you need to figure that out before you come to court. We can't tell you how this will affect your license for, because for various reasons. One, because it involves state and federal law that we don't generally deal with. And two, because your individual record may have some bearing on it. And we don't have anybody who specializes in that. We don't advise you as to what decision you should make based on your license. Uh, and how are you guys going to charge me? What's the $300 for? That's the fine. 
trying for um uh, for for following too um, for uh too for uh uh too fast for conditions uh, th this is my main thing about that fast condition like so the, the i almost lost my life that day and then you guys come sitting here trying to charge me for this money and i uh, and i don't fit i don't sit right with it and the fact that i was not going fast okay mr platon you can you all you have the right to appeal if you wish to appeal you should yes, do so please. within, within th listen to me okay because you don't listen so listen you have the right to appeal within 30 days i can't help you with your appeal that's entirely up to you um, you need to file it with the clerk of court if you wish to appeal, and you need to do that within 30 days of today. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Otherwise, you'll have 60 days in which to pay the fine in the amount of $300. The total with the surcharges would be $444. Um, do you have an email address, sir? Yes. All right. We need that so that we can send this information to you. Is Diaz a dog? Mm -hmm. Zoe Jack 2012 at yahoo.com. All right. So I have D as in dog, Z as in um, zebra, O, E as in Edward, J as in John, A, C, K as in um, cat, Ken 2012 at yahoo. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All right, sir, you'll receive your information in the mail and go ahead and make sure you appeal uh, within the time frame that I gave you, okay? Thank you. All right, take care. All right, next for trial is Turner. We ready on Turner? Yes, I'm here. Your Honor, just going to move the no process rules. All right, Mr. Turner, your case will be no process. You're free to go at this time. Um, it's dismissed, sir. Can I have? I have a problem with the police report. Can I have the police report changed and redacted? Because I was when I have proof that uh, I didn't cause the accident. You need to get out. OK, well, can. sir, you'll have to take that up with the police agency that dealt with this case. I'm no process in the case, which means that the case is going to be dismissed. But I can't tell a police officer to change their report. The only way they can amend is you go through their supervisor. Right. I reached out to the supervisor and the captain that was on duty at several times, but he was not. Uh, he was like, I guess, at different locations and um and was gone from. Uh, they saying he was in the army or something at the time, and I never could ever get in contact with him. And I have like confirmations and emails of everything from the captains and sergeants. I get that, sir. But what a lot of people um, misunderstand is they think that I have something to do with the police officers. Really, okay. they're witnesses, just like you're a witness or witnesses that you would bring. So I don't have any connection with them other than they need to show up in court to testify from time to time. But I can't, I like, I don't deal with their supervisors and stuff like that. That That's not what I do. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, sir. All right, next for trial is White. Darius. Traffic violation. Perfect. All right, you got one of those two first name situations. Is it Officer Cole or Officer Elliot? Officer Elliot. All oh, right, sorry. thank you. Yes, ma'am. No All right, and Mr. Turner. All right, raise your right hand for me, officer. You solemnly swear or affirm any testimony you give in this matter will be true. I do. All right, you can put your hand down. You're before the court um, on case uh, 2023 TK01230 for Darius Quintess White. Mr. White, oh, there you are. 
So, Mr. White, you have the right to remain silent. You do not have to give any um, testimony or evidence in this case. Um, the state has the burden to prove the case against you without, um, beyond a reasonable doubt, which means they're going to present their witnesses and their evidence first. Um, you have the right to question any testimony given by one of their witnesses, but questions only, sir. You don't want to make any statements because you haven't um, talked to me about whether you wish to give up your right to remain silent, okay? And if you do wish to give testimony or evidence, we'll go over your rights with you before you do that. All right. Yes, ma'am. All right. State's witness. Thank you, Judge. Can you please say your name for the record? It's Officer Cole Elliott. And where are you currently employed? I work for the Clayton County Police Department. How long have you been with Clayton County? A little over a year, year and some change. <laughs> And what are what is your current job assignment? Uh, I'm currently assigned a uniform patrol division. And what are some of your job duties under that division? I respond to any call for service, whether it be a domestic or an accident or a traffic violation or any of the such. Do you also patrol the areas as well? Yes, ma'am. And in patrolling, do you conduct stops on your um, on your own volition? Yes, ma'am. And are you a post certified officer? Yes, ma'am. Were you post certified on January 20th of 2023? Yes, ma'am. Do you recall conducting a traffic stop on a late model white Su Suzu? No, ma'am, to be honest, when we do traffic stops and traffic citations, there's not a report that's generated with them. Uh, I would have to review the body cam and the dash cam footage to have recollection of the event. Did you have a chance to review your body camera before the um, before court today? No, ma'am, I don't have access to review my body camera from that far away or from that long ago. Would reviewing your citation assist in refreshing your memory? She's so slow. Uh, it may, but chances are it's going to have his identifying information and the car's identifying information and the traffic citation as far as what the actual OCGA was that he was charged with, but that's the only recollection I would have of the event. Okay. Your Honor, based off the testimony of your office, it's just going to move no problem. All right, Mr. White, your case will be no right. problem, sir. If you need a copy of it, um, if you give us your email address, we can go ahead and send that to you. Okay. It's capital D as in Darius underscore white 21. E at cap or white. I'm sitting here. W H I T E -E 21 on at hotmail. Yes, ma'am. Dot com. Oh, yes. Somebody's right. email. Thank you, sir. Be free bad. to go at this time. Yeah, so just to confirm. <clears throat> yes, sir. I just want to confirm that Briscoe and Mitchell are not going to be happening today. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. So that means my case is dismissed, Miss? Yes. Huh? Yes, it's dismissed. Okay. Thanks so much. You're welcome, sir. And there we go. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. We almost had a little, we had like a little baby marathon of Judge Tammy today. I really appreciate you guys being with me and sticking here with me. And hopefully I'll see you guys in the chat in a little bit. When this goes up, I'll put it up as a premiere so that you guys can chat while it's going on. Stay safe, be good, and I'll see you on the next one.